Welcome back to the Royal Alchemist, the extended demo. Uh, you will probably hear my dog in the background playing with his um, food, snack thing. So, yeah. Um, it's been a whole month <laughs> since I recorded the last part, but I edited the, the last part you could see um, just recently so uh, I know I Ooh. was very tempted to go find the Lord Regent so yeah I'll probably do that and then um, if <laughs> nothing comes out of it we'll find Sala but then again, I, I, I actually want to try and kill myself in the demo as well, so you, we could go with Sala. But no, let's go for the Lord Regent and see what he has to tell us. Since the Regent would have more insider knowledge of Eskia's political history than anyone, I begin looking around for him. Before long, I am drawn to the commotion coming out of the palace garden. Sure enough, I find the Lord Regent surrounded by a crowd of nobles. He looks harassed as he responds to one demand after another. Our ancient right to our servants' first night is sacred and irre irrevocable. What? Ancient right? What are you talking about? No. It is revocable. I am all for revoking that right. It should be an honour for our servant to lay, lay with us on their first wedding night. It shouldn't. No. No. Run away screaming if uh, someone asks you for that. Unless it is your husband, of course, and you like them. <laughs> uh, husband or wife, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Oh, looks like my old friends are here as well. The king has already made it clear in the constitution. Established without the consent of his peers, an illegal unsigned document. My lords, you had no object objections to make when the king... Sir, we love and respect the late king as much as you, but it does not mean we are in favour of an unrestricted monarchy. The rights of the king's peers must be upheld. Outdated rights that had been abolished. May I remind you, sir, that the jus primaire noctis What? Use prima noctis. Ah, the, the right of the first night, all right. Uh, was around long before the monarchy, and at this rate will still be around long after it is gone. Not in my age, no, thank you. What do you mean by at this rate, my lord? The Lord Regent's voice suddenly becomes very quiet. I mean what I say. I hope you will consider our advice carefully, sir. I briefly toyed with the idea of throwing a fire floor Gustin at the smug man, but decided in the end that it is not the diplomatic thing to do. Instead, I clear my throat loudly and bow to the Lord Regent. Good afternoon, my Lord Regent. Young Rosengold, this is an unexpected pleasure. You again? Oh, sir, forgive me, I had not seen you. Please allow me to apologize for intruding earlier today on your intriguing conversation about your days of liberty before the king. Liberty, was it? The Lord Regent's voice had gone quiet. His gaze is quite cold. Anarchy. The word was used. Uh, the word we used was anarchy. Was it? I must have misheard. In that case, why did you think it might be better for you if the monarchy were to be altogether a bot? I do not know this person. I have no idea what she's talking about. Good day to you. 
declaring furiously, the nobleman pushes past me, followed in short order by his two companions. Abandoned by their most outspoken leaders, the remaining aristocrats look at each other uneasily. One after another, they mumble their excuses and leave. <sighs> Fortuitous timing. What do you need, young Rosenkreuz? I had wanted to ask you about the late king and the founding of the kingdom, but I saw that you were very busy with government affairs. Government affairs, eh? Ah, that's one way of putting it. Government affairs have, thanks to you, left me alone for now, so I have some time to spare for your questions. Ask why. I not and slightly incline my hat in the direction of a chair next to the white pavilion's table and cross of the Lord Regent. May I? <laughs> but of course. Thank you. Smiling, I take my seat and look at the Regent. The nobleman just now said you are related to the Queen rather than the King. I'm sure he didn't put it so politely, but he's right. Forgive me, but I thought it is more usual for the king's own relatives to have the regency. That is the custom in most other realms. <laughs> the king has no relatives. He turned up an esky out of nowhere and made himself king by forcing the local nobility to submit to him. How did he do that? Charisma, force of will and strategic genius, and most importantly, a great deal of luck. The people say that he was favoured by the gods. Must be useful to have the gods on your side. Very much. When his enemies wanted to march, it would rain and hail until they could not walk an inch. Whenever his archers shot, the wind would carry their arrows straight in the ranks of his enemies. When he laid siege to the port city of Alia, Alia, his opponent's reinforcing fleet was wrecked by a storm and an earthquake collapsed the city walls. Alright. Amazing and quite fearful. Sure is. Oh, sorry, I'm tired. As always, but today... As I know I'm trying to stay up for the Nintendo Direct, it, it is getting harder and harder. Even though it's only 8pm, it's like my body telling me no. Four more hours? No way now. Well then again, I wake up quite early, so... When other people stay up till 4am, they normally tend to sleep until... 10 to 11 a.m. while I wake up at 5 a.m. and stay up till I don't know 1 to 2 a.m. if I want to but normally go to sleep quite early. Ah uh, yep indeed the king must have been favoured by the gods not even the most powerful of magicians within the council would be able to command such force of nature. And did you see, see all of this? We were there with him right from the very beginning, my sister and I. We met him just after he arrived at Askia. <clears throat> How did that meeting occur? My sister and I were attacked by the raiding party of a robber baron. Baron. Robber baron. There were lots of minor nobility who made their living by robbing others back in those days. The king appeared and saved our caravan, even though he was already heavily wounded. Were you a merchant then? <laughs> my parents were merchants, but they were killed by bandits when my sister and I were children. We had to learn to fend for ourselves from an early age. It must have been a difficult time for you. So it was. Unfortunately, uh, the town's herbalist took pity on us and took us under her wing. I can never get all the names of the strange smelling herbs into my thick head, but my sister learned quickly and became a very skilled herbalist. Your guardian must have been proud to have such a quick student in her ward. The Lord Regent smiled and spit as he seems to recall unpleasant memories. No, she was jealous and felt threatened. She manufactured us a false pretense that got us expelled from the town and we were forced to wander the realm on our own. 
if you're afraid of someone taking your job, why would you teach them? Why? Just why? If she learned it by herself, sure. You might be threatened by that, but uh, if you taught her yourself, it, it, it tends to happen that the uh, pupil um, well outshines her master. It tends to happen since the master is normally stuck in his or her way of doing things. The pupil has to find his or her way um, and doing things their own way. So they might find a new way to make it quicker, more efficient. So that they might they might outshine their master. It, 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 it's quite... I don't know how to say that, but it's quite normal. Oh well, who am I to judge? How cruel, but understandable. It was every man for himself. Those were the times. My lips burst into a frown. It was a world I couldn't imagine, much less understand. I suppose you must have met the king during your travels. <laughs> yes. My sister made potions and remedies, and I sold them to the villagers who were passed by. That's how we made our living. One day, when we were travelling in a caravan, imagine merchants band together for safety, a robber baron attacked us. He would have overwhelmed us if the king was there. He said he was heavily wounded then. For a while, we feared for the life of our mysterious saviour. Only after days and nights of unceasing care, my sister was able to cure his wounds and make him well again. Where was he wo- My lord regent? We turned around at the interruption. Raphael is running towards us, a formidable look, looking stack of papers on his arm. Looks like government affairs have found me again. As Raphael reaches us, his head inclines into a polite bow. Oh, Lady Rosenkreutz, I beg your pardon, I did not see you. Something the matter, Raphael. Treasurer business, I'll wager. Yes, my Lord Regent, the Treasury urgently requests your attention on the matter of financing Alia's war rep reparations. That again. You'd have thought the gods could have taken care of that too after the damn place fell, my lord regent. <laughs> Never you mind. The lord regent replies with a smile towards me, even though I am as bewildered as Raphael is. Well, young Rosenkreutz, it's been a nice chat, but duty calls. She is a most demanding mistress. Good day, my lord regent. Raphael. Good day. I bow and withdraw, trying to digest everything I've learned this afternoon. Alright. We did good, I guess. Try um a water bucket. Dynamite. Ah, iron bar. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Can I make more than one? And I don't get it. Why? Does that decrease my skill points if I use this? <sighs> Those are quite expensive. So the water bucket, was it? Mm. 
what do they need? Saren 15 earth, Nazir 15 wind, and Aurelius 15 water. Let's see how. Oh. Did we reach? Let's see. Saren, yep. Nazir, yep. Uh, water, yep. That's good, I guess. <laughs> so we could do the mission. I want to find the family of that good captain. Uh -huh. In memoriam. In memory. I was wondering. Uh, but first let me see if I can make something with alchemy. Yeah? I can't? Why shouldn't I be able to synthesize? Oh, so I need the character to be able to... Wow, that's annoying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Pen and paper. Let's get it ready. Moriam. Start. The discreet inquiries I had made at the palace have borne fruit at last. The quartermaster has found the family of the captain of my escort that night. With the death of the family's main breadwinner, the good captain's wife and their daughters have moved back to the countryside of Spella. Nobody knew how they have been coping since. I decided to pay the bereaved a wizard to offer them my condolences and my gratitude. More particularly, more practically, I also want to find out if there was anything I could do to help them, the widow and her children. The princess has help, had helped me prepare small gifts, just simple offerings of flowers, food and the like. Ah, so that's why. Okay. I did not want to insult them with a gift of money, for their loss have been much greater than that. However, if such was what they needed, I was prepared to be generous with the salary I am earning as royal tutor. When I presented myself to the front door, the widow was inclined to be standoffish at first. After I managed to convince her of my sincerity and good intentions, she invited me for tea and we had a frank discussion about the family situation. They were currently living on the savings accumulated in happier days and the widow was looking for an adequate job to support her children. I had offered to arrange a position for her in the palace's housekeeping staff and for her daughters to enter the royal military orphanage. Normally it was only open to the orphans of the aristocratic war, but at their f as their father had been commissioned officer and died on active duty, I would have been able to stretch the point. Alice, she rejected my offer. At length, she told me she was glad the one her husband died for was such a sensible young person. However, she had no intention of moving back to the capital and wanted to live a simple life with her family. So, common approval raised, 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 rose again. Wow. English. My, my best. Yep. My English at its best. All right. Um, Commas quite like us. I like it. Uh, and aristocracy. Okay. In the end, I could only convince her that I would talk to Prince Nazir and find a suitable occupation for her at Spella. It wasn't much, but I also made them promise to seek me out if the need arises. Returning to the palace, I sincerely hope they'll be alright. I am muttering quietly to myself, reviewing the syllabus for today's classes when a voice caught my attention. Could that be Aurelius? With whom is he speaking? Oh, oh that's loud. 
careful not to be spotted. I watched as Aurelius stands <clears throat> next to a large marble bust engaged in a conversation what's oblivious to the world. His conversation partner, however, remains half hidden from view behind the bust. Neither of them had has noticed me, nor does not seem like they will. doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Neither of them have noticed me, or nor does it seem like they will. Scratch that knot, please. Thank you. Unable to help myself appear more closely at the two. Scholar? Long hair flashing in sunshine, sharp tipped ears tucked underneath, a gentle expression that calms the soul. There is no mistaking it. The woman he is speaking with is Sala, my personal servant. What business does he have with her? Why are they standing so close together? And is Aurelius genuinely smiling? No, my dear Catfield. I wonder what they are talking about. My etiquette failed now. <laughs> I wonder what they are talking about. Only one way to find out. They walk up to the pair and utter a polite greeting. Good day. Lady Rosekreutz. The duo turns towards me, Sala smiling. Or really is. Not so much. What do you want? Snarking at me the moment he sees me. If it was anyone else other than Prince Aurelius, I would have deemed this e event suspicious. Nothing particular. What are you two talking about? Please excuse me, Your Highness. Lady Rosenkreutz wishes to discuss matters with you, so I will bid my adieu and be out of your way. You're not in the way. Sarah merely smiles again and curtsies carefully. Uh, gracefully. In a delicate fashion, she then turns and walks away, leaving me gaping wordlessly after her. Well, I hope you have a good reason for interrupting us. Sorry, I had no idea. I was only wondering if I was talking to you. She asks about how I am sometimes. It's nothing out of the ordinary. The servant, not assigned to a prince, casually asking about uh, after his well-being, is something out of the ordinary said prince replying to and even being friendly with the servant is even more out of the ordinary and that prince being prince aurelius out of all people makes it the most out of the ordinary event i've seen needless to say i keep these thoughts to myself i don't need to be engaging in another sparring match so that's why Sala left so quickly. She doesn't want her personal concerns towards the prince to be widely known about the palace. Aurelius, on the other hand, doesn't look like he cares much at all. Sala has been working the palace for as long as I can remember, and she has always been a caring and devoted companion to my brothers and I. I wonder how old Sal actually is. She doesn't look much older than Aurelius, but from what he said, she must be at least old enough to be his mother. It's amazing how only a monkless appearance always stays the same, no matter how much time passes. An envious trait indeed. I see. Do you now? Good. Aurelius straightens his posture with an abrupt motion and nods curtly in the direction of the study. Well, shall we be heading to class? Yes. Side by side, we walk down the corridor in silence, not exchanging another word along the entire way there. Alright, I guess this is enough for one week. For one week, no. For this part. Um... I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I hope to see you soon. Bye bye!